You can't give away what you don't have. Now, it sounds ridiculous, okay? But it's more than what meets the ear as you hear this. You can't give away what you don't have. People who are not good at giving away love can't give away love because they don't have it to give away. If I want to give you a dozen oranges, I can't give you those dozen oranges unless I go out and pick up 12 oranges someplace. Otherwise, all it is is just empty rhetoric. And the same thing is true of virtually everything in your life. You can't give away love for others if you don't have love in here to give away. If what you have in here is contempt, if what you have in here is anger, if what you have in here is fear, then these are the things you're going to be giving away in your life. And I've often thought, and I really believe very strongly that uh, there's a law, sort of a law in the universe. I call it the law of attraction. And the law of attraction is one that works like this. You get back from the universe, from the world, what it is that you put out there in the world. And if you're putting out there into the world that I am not worthy of attracting something beautiful into my life, that the universe will respond back to you with exactly that message. And there are people who come to me and who came to me for years when I had a, uh, my own uh, counseling practice and so on, and they would say to me, um, I just keep attracting the same kind of people, the same kind of events, the same kind of uh, losers into my life. Why is that? Why do I keep doing that? And I keep attracting uh, an absence of, uh, of abundance. I just can't seem to attract abundance into my life. I'm always behind the eight ball. I'm never getting ahead. <clears throat> and I suggest to them, I said, did it ever occur to you that that's the very kind of message you're sending out to the world and out to the universe? That the ocean of abundance is there. And you can go to that ocean of abundance and you can take a Mack truck and you can fill it up 20 times a day and take it out of there and guess what? It doesn't impact at all the ocean of abundance. It doesn't even go down a zillionth of an inch. It's unlimited. Or you can go to the same ocean of abundance with a eyedropper and you can just take this much out once a month and say, that's all that seems to be available for me. And the interesting thing for me is that when people go to this ocean of abundance, this uh, unlimited world, all that I have is thine, it says in the holy books. All that I have is thine. It's all there for you. But if you believe inside that it's limited, that you can only get so much, that other people are gonna get it before you do, then you'll find yourself creating that very same thing. And the even more interesting part about this, you can't give away what you don't have principle, is that if your message to the universe is gimme, 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 which is a lot of people's message to the universe. I want this from you, I want that from you, please give me this, I have to have that. That's what their prayer is like, that's what their message is, you know, and they say, I want this from the universe, gimme, gimme, gimme. The universe's response back to that kind of a uh, mentality is exactly the same. The universe will say right back to you over and over again, gimme, gimme, gimme. And you'll find yourself never ever arriving, but always being in a state of striving, always feeling as if you're being neglected, never feeling as if you have enough, always feeling as if you're being shortchanged because you're constantly under the pressure to give, to get back what the universe is demanding from you. And the interesting thing about all of this, the, the irony of this, is that if you shift that and you say to the universe, to the world, how may I serve? How may I serve? The universe's response back to you is, how may I serve you? How may I serve you? And it's very intriguing. When you take your energy and your attention off of what you are demanding from the world and instead saying, what can I give to the world? And it's really the, the basis behind that very famous line of the uh, President uh, John Kennedy's uh, inaugural address. Ask not what your country can do, ask what you can do, 
for your country. And the irony of that is, and I've learned that in my own life, that when I stopped thinking about what was in it for Wayne Dyer and how much could I get, and I began to shift and say, how can I help you? How can I give to you? What can I do for you? And people who write to me, uh, I send them something. When, when I encounter somebody that needs help of some kind, I'm very often just giving that to them. And then I find that it just keeps coming back into my life. And once I shifted that energy off of what can I have into what can I give, it seemed to me that the universe responded back with the very same message, what can I give to you? And the most incredible and wonderful and beautiful abundance has flowed into my life in every way that I can possibly think of. You can't give away what you don't have. There are no justified resentments. And this is a very difficult principle for many people to get, but one that I believe very strongly in. I was in a group one time of uh, drug addicts and alcoholics. And I was uh, one of the people that was a sponsor and leading this group. And the sign on the wall said, there are no justified resentments in this group. And what I said to that group that, that night was, no matter what anybody says to you here, no matter what kind of uh, uh, anger comes directed towards you, no matter how much hate you may encounter showing up in your life, there are no justified resentments. Meaning that if you carry around resentment inside of you about anything or about anyone, and I'm talking about the person that you lent money to and hasn't paid you back. I'm talking about the person in your life that you feel was abusive in your life. I'm talking about the person who walked out on you and left you for somebody else. I'm talking about all of the things that you have justified in your heart and in your life that you have the right to be resentful about. And I'm suggesting to you that those resentments will always end up harming you and creating in you a sense of despair. I've often said that you, no one ever dies from a snake bite. The snake bite will never kill you. You cannot be unbitten. Once you're bitten, you're bitten. But it's the venom that continues to pour through your system after the bite that will end up destroying you. Have a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing. One of the central principles of my life is that no one knows enough to be a pessimist about anything and that each and every one of us when we close our mind to what is possible for us or what is possible for humanity closes off the genius that resides and lives in each and every one of us having an open mind doesn't necessarily mean uh, finding fault with all of the things that you've been taught by others it means opening yourself up to the potentiality and the possibility that anything and everything is possible. So having a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing really means finding within ourselves the ability to get rid of a trait that I find so common in, contemporary, in the contemporary world. Do you know that most people that I meet spend their lives looking for occasions to be offended. They actually are out there hoping that they can find some reason to be offended. And there's no shortage of reasons. They're out there everywhere. The way this person dressed, the what this person said, they turn on their TV, they hear the news, they're offended by this, someone didn't, uh, someone used language that they didn't like, someone doesn't share the same customs that you, and people all day long, in fact, if you keep track tomorrow, you will find uh, probably a hundred reasons that you can go around being offended. 
But a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing is a mind that says, I'm never looking for anything to be offended by. And that whatever anybody else out there has to say, my response to that is, that's an interesting point of view. I've never considered that before. The next principle I call, don't die with your music still in you. And who better to quote than Thoreau right here in Concord when he talked about some of us hear a different drummer and we must march to the music that we hear. But all of you, everybody watching, everybody here in this beautiful parish, all of you have some music playing and all of you have a heroic mission. There's no accidents in this universe. We all show up here with a purpose. There's an intelligence that is a part of everything and everyone, and all of us are connected to it. And too many of us are afraid to listen to that music and march to it. You out there, I know you have a book you wanted to write. I know there's a composition you wanted to compose. I know there's a song you want to sing someplace. Maybe you want to raise horses out in Montana. Or maybe you want to open up an ice cream shop on Cape Cod. Who knows what it may be. Maybe you just want to travel and see the world. Maybe you want to go into a relationship with someone but you've been afraid to, but your heart says it's the right thing to do. All of us feel something. And in Leo Tolstoy's famous novel, The Death of Ivan Illich, he asks this question that would be terrifying to me. He says, as he has his accountant from Moscow lying on his deathbed, contemplating the horror of this question, what if my whole life has been wrong? I've known what my music is. It's playing right now. As I stand here in front of you with these cameras and in this place, and as I sit down and write my books and tell the world what I know are my truths, I feel always completely on purpose and fulfilled. And no time will I ever come to the end of my life and say, what if my whole life has been wrong? Whoever you are, whatever that music is, however distant it may sound, however strange, however weird others may interpret it to be, don't get to the end of your life and know that you're going to leave and not have it played yet. Don't die with your music still in you. If you want to change your life for free in the next 30 days, click the link right below me. And if you want my Oprah Winfrey affirmations video, check the link right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy them. Continue to believe. I'll see you there.